Hey guys, Marisa Stone here from Simon Says Social, and I'm going to be talking to you today about one of my absolute favorite platforms for um, being more productive, and that platform is called Asana. And today we're going to talk a little bit about how to set up your blog editorial calendar inside Asana. So you're starting a blog, you're trying to get it up and running, or maybe you already have a blog and you're working on, you know, getting um, all your posts together ahead of time so that you can make sure that you're proactively doing what you need to do inside your blog and you're looking for a tool to do so. So let's jump over to Asana and I'm going to show you kind of what my editorial calendar looks like. Now, this is a sample blog. Once you have logged into Asana, Asana is a free platform. All you have to do is go and sign up. Um, and as long as your teams are under 15 people, and if you look over here at the top, I've got like four people um, in my Simon Says um, group right here who's working on blogging. So as long as you've got under 15 people, including yourself, the platform is free to you. Um, for those of you that don't know, Asana was actually created by one of the co-founders of Facebook. It was used inside Facebook for a very long time to help keep them up and running and their productivity at peak performance. So they've really added a lot of really cool features. And recently they introduced boards, which makes Asana very similar to Trello. If you've ever used Trello, you know that it operates in boards, right? And so now you can actually design boards. So let's dive in for a second. And I'm gonna show you two different ways um, in which you can set up your own projects and, um, and get your blog up and running quickly. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna come over here to the left-hand side and click this little plus that says create a project. What that's gonna do is it's gonna open um, up a dialog box that's going to allow you to name your project. So let's say that this is a test blog, right? And then you can choose whether or not you want to do this in a list or whether or not you want to do this in their new board platform. Boards are kind of like the sticky notes that you're seeing on the screen behind you. You really want to keep this private or, um, or share it as public just to make sure that your team members see it. Since this is an example, I'm going to actually set mine to private because I don't want my team members thinking, oh my gosh, she's creating more work for us to do, look out. So then you create your project and this opens up the opportunity to start adding things. Now I'm going to show you a couple of different examples, right? So the first example is of course our sample blog number one. Our sample blog number one is set up like a board, right? We've used the board layout option. And as you can see, I have chosen to have, you know, I'm doing four weeks worth of content, post one, post two, post three, and post four. Now, for those of you who are really paying attention, you're going to notice that in brackets, I, it says my blog. Now, the reason that I have done that is because the name of this particular post is my blog post one, right? But I put that in brackets and you'll see it in brackets down here. Post one is in brackets, post two is in brackets, post three is in brackets and post four is in brackets because when, I, when all this layout is said and done and this shows up on my calendar, it's actually going to show me which blog post I'm working on. And that's super important if you've got parallel projects running, right? So anyway, so the first step in my blog post one is to research a topic and then I want to do a keyword search and then maybe I want to create an outline and then I want to maybe do a draft blog post and maybe then an image search, right? Because you want to make sure you have images that go along with your blog post. Then maybe I need to take those images and those keywords and my outline and my draft and I need to create a final blog post. And then I want to create an email sequence around this blog post. So maybe I'm introducing people, you know, ahead of time. So in the in the blog post before this one, maybe I'm saying, hey, watch out, you know, look for it next week. You know, I'll be doing blog post one on X topic, right? So I want my email sequence pulled together where I introduce them, have them looking for it. 
I send them the blog post and then I send them some follow-up about what they thought about it or or garner some feedback from my list. I like to keep my list very interactive. Um, and then I plan my social media around my blog post and then maybe later down the road, I'm gonna repurpose this blog post, right? So all I did when I created all of these posts is I added a new, a new task for myself to do. And of course, sticking with my you know, my post one inside brackets, you know, maybe I want to say, you know, design images because maybe I've already chosen images, but now they need to be branded and they need to, they need to look like, you know, my, my brand, right? So I can add that in here. Um, it's really easy then to assign this task. I can just assign it to myself and then I can click on this calendar that's going to allow me to assign a due date, right? Over here under sample blog, which we're working on right now, I can actually set a highlight color. Because this is my blog and it goes along with my brand, I've chosen a highlight color that goes with my brand so that I know, hey, this is my own blog. This is not a client I'm working on. I need to make sure that that you know that these tasks are completed so that my blog goes out to my followers on time. So when I click on my calendar, what you're gonna see is a number of different posts that pop up and, and show you exactly as post three, post one, post four, those sorts of things. Well, if I go up here to the top and I click on my tasks and I go to my calendar there, now my calendar items are highlighted by color, right? So these posts all belong to my blog. These posts here belong to maybe say a client or something of that sort, right? So that's kind of the way that you would set up the actual board, right? Where you're setting up the um, a board uh, category um, blog editorial calendar. And this is a second way to do this. And this is actually my preferred layout. I like a running to-do list. I like to know what I've gotten done, when I've gotten it done, and those sorts of things. And one of the things that I love about this original simple layout is that it tells me exactly what I need to do by when. So for instance, you know, let's say on my blog post one, you know, I need to research a topic. As you can see over here on the side, you know, this is telling me that this is due by tomorrow. So I know I need to get on this, right? My keyword research is also due by tomorrow. Then I wanna get my outline done. I wanna draft the blog post. I wanna do my image search. And I can just add due dates for all of these things right here. Now, this blog um, editorial calendar is highlighted in a different color. And I did that on purpose because I want you guys to be able to see the difference. So a couple of things that I wanna show you on this one. Um, so one of the cool things about the way that you set things up in, in list format is that in order to divide this list up by sections, so maybe let's say I need a new section and that section needs to be my social media, right? And so maybe what I'm gonna do under social media and this, because it's for all blog posts, then maybe my social media is actually set up for all my blog posts, right? So it's kind of, it's a standalone project because there's a lot of work involved with setting up my social media, right? So I'm gonna assign this to myself and then I'm gonna give myself a due date of say the end of the month because this all this social media stuff has to go out by then in order for my blog posts to you know, have the correct marketing strategy to get them out there to people. So maybe I say, you know, create posts, create images, you know, whatever I wanna add in here that's gonna go along with my social media platform, right? I can also add subtasks. So maybe under create images, maybe that's kind of a big job. I want them all branded, I want them all to look very nice, you know maybe what I really need to do is set this aside as its own task or add a series of subtasks that are gonna go along with creating these images. So I need to upload my logo on all my images. I need to, um, you know, add my URL. 
I need to make sure that all of my images are branded, you know, so that they so that they look like my images. So because I business is all about technology, a lot of times my branded images actually have computers and, you know, and, and mobile devices and things like that. So they look like branded images. If I'm sharing images of farm animals, somebody's gonna get a little confused as to what's going on with my brand, right? I can also write comments in here. So let's say I'm sharing this with my team and I need to say, hey, can you guys, assist in getting this done and then when I add that comment all of my team members will actually see it right um, somebody else can add something in here and I can like it by adding that little heart right there that helps um, to communicate to my team that yes I saw this I understand that you want me to assist and and I'm on it right I can also add attachments. So let's say that I've seen a particular so social media you know, post and I absolutely loved it. I can attach that file right here inside this box and my team members can see it and I can say, I'm really looking for something that looks sort of like this and they can use that as inspiration when they're creating what I'm trying to get them to create in our social media marketing strategy. So. This is a pretty quick and easy way to set up. All you do is add a task, or if the task is bigger, you add a section. So for each of my blog posts, I've got sections. You know, post one has its own section of researching the topic and keywords and, you know, outlining the blog and all of those sorts of things. Post two also has its own section, the same situation, right? And then all I have to do, so I see right here, I've got um, on, on section one, I've got repurposed the blog post, but I have not added that to section two and section three and section four. So by copying and pasting, I'm keeping my system complete, right? I know that, you know, from at some point after, I put, after this blog post goes live, I'm gonna wanna repurpose it. So what might that look like? That could be a video, that could be a write-up about that blog on somebody else's um, platform that could be you know a Facebook live about that blog like what would repurposing look like right and because I know that this is kind of a normal part of the process when I'm blogging that eventually I will repurpose that blog post I want to make sure that I add that to my list as well and as you can see I added my SB2 post 2 post 3 and post 4 right now again, if we take a look at the calendar, when you're inside the project, that's simply gonna show you the items that are associated with this project. But if I go up here to the top and I take a look at my global tasks, now my calendar is going to show all the tasks associated with my, these two blogs, getting them up and running. And here's the really cool thing. If I want to share this calendar so that it shows up on my personal Google Calendar, I can do that as well, which is a super cool um, component to, to setting up your editorial calendar through Asana. So the last thing that I'd like to tell you about is if you want to learn more about Asana and how to Get everything up and running in your own business from your editorial calendars to whatever it is that you have going on i actually have your back i've got an asana toolbox 30-day master class this master class teaches you all about navigating your way through asana all the different ways in which you can, can communicate with your team members. Asana organization, so storage and file re retrieval, searching um, for different things, adding visuals, tying everything all together. It even covers an opportunity to use Asana for your own personal needs, right? You can create schedules and routines for your family and send out a honey-do list if you want. And then it covers the next level Asana. So leveling up with advanced features like integrations, using Asana with clients, onboarding new clients, emailing tasks on the go, pulling together meeting um, agendas, like all of that. Seriously, Asana is absolutely power packed and it allows you to accomplish your goals by staying firmly planted in your zone 
of uh, sauna. If you're interested in this online course, it is only $2.97 right now. It will be available as part of my signature course later. So if you're interested, grab your copy now. If you have questions or need answers to anything, feel free to reach out to me. Um, Simon says dot social is my website and I'd love to see you there and good luck on setting up your own blog editorial calendar. Thanks guys. Marisa Stone again. Simon says social.